once again, my name is Glenn Williams. You're watching BNN TV's It's All About Us, and right now it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce you to Matthew McKee. Hello, Matthew. Glenn. Is it Hello. Matt? Matt. Matt is okay. How are you? Very well. Thank you. Well, welcome to the studio. Did you find us okay? Yeah. From all the way out in Dedham, someplace out uh, in that actually, rural. I'm coming in from Hyde Park. That's oh, that's favorite. easy. Oh, you have a studio in Hyde Park. Are you part of that complex at uh, the um, Westinghouse, Westinghouse yes, buildings? The there? at Westinghouse, I think, is the official <clears throat> title of it. Sprague Street. Yes. Yes. Uh, no, actually, Sprague Street's further around. This is right off of Neponset Valley. Oh, okay, okay. How are they? How are your accommodations there? Wonderful. I'll bet Absolutely they are. Wonderful. Must be nice to have a dedicated space. Uh, for eight years, I shot out of a one-car garage mm. um, that we had semi-converted. Uh, by semi, I mean we had some heat. Uh, especially in the summertime and some air conditioning in the winter and other than that uh, <laughs> yeah clients didn't like it so much if they had to come out uh, to play out there but now, uh, now you're a photographer yes uh, amongst other things mm -hmm. you, you also do some graphic designing mm -hmm. as well and uh, in an all around, all around regular guy <laughs> I think, um, so. I think so. Well, let's, start, let's talk about the photography. Has photography always been your medium? Has it always been something that you've been doing? Uh, well, I started out actually years and years ago wanting to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to college for it, and they asked for a dedication of like it took a week to do a painting. And uh, then it took like a month to do pottery. And at that point in my life, I just wasn't ready for that kind of a commitment. <laughs> so uh, photography was a way of doing something very quickly and, and getting results very fast. Right. Um, now, of course, for me to spend a week doing pre-production on a photo shoot is, and another week in post-production is nothing out of the ordinary. There's nothing out of the ordinary. Um, uh, back when you first started, I'm not, I'm not poking at age here or anything, was everything analog still? Yes, film. Yeah. Yeah. Still, so you're still shooting with 35 millimeter film. Yeah. Were you developing black and white yourself, or were you? Um... I did it, but again, it was uh, uh, patience is not one of my virtues. So to go through the process of processing, well, uh, to, yeah, to that's get it right. Done, yes. That's right. <laughs> uh, I was never a big fan of it. I, I liked it when someone else took care of it. I wanted to create the image. I wanted it to be done and let someone else deal right. with the chemistry and, right. and deal with the the little, you know. It has to be 99.7 degrees or whatever the developer had to be at. Right, and, right. No. So you, you were not dragged kicking and screaming into the digital age. It, digital was a blessing. Yeah, I can only yeah. imagine. Sure. Um, well, well, let's talk about that transition, okay? Because we have a lot of students that, that uh, my cam well, for instance, my camera uh, is, is I have an analog can Canon. Mm -hmm. My wife has a digital. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I prefer, I like it for some reason because I like the setup and I almost like that little weight for the for the gratification I've heard that a lot yeah. you know and and um, um, when when you're working with analog when you personally are working with analog how much setup was there I mean was there's always the light issue there's always that did I capture well and that's the big problem is you know did I get it and now yeah. if you're out on location <clears throat> somewhere and you're you're not going to be back to Aruba anytime too soon yeah you want to know you got it in the can and shooting film back then was Kind of hope and pray and hope it doesn't get destroyed. And well, it also get to be pretty expensive because you, I'm sure you're not taking one or two shots. You're no. probably trying to make sure that you get what you need. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, many, many rolls of film. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, I forgot where I was going. We were talking about the the, the, the transition yes. into, into digital life. <clears throat> there's there's a but problem with going into digital that a lot of people miss is taking the time to do the setup, taking the time to think about, okay, what does this image actually look like? What are we trying to say with this image? Mm -hmm. And they have more of a, you know, a press and spray methodology of let's shoot everything in sight, but that's not really creating an image. That's taking snapshots. Yeah. So yeah, lighting is very important to me. Right. Uh, composition is very important to me. If you can do it all on camera, why bring out Photoshop? But even though you have that instant feedback, you still need to stop and look at the feedback. Right. Do you use Photoshop or Corel or any of the programs? Uh, Photoshop is like my left arm. Yeah. It's a standard. Yeah. 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 Well, that's CS. Are you in? Yeah, CS5 now. Not CS5. Yeah. <laughs> As it grows. Yes. And, and and will take off from us. I mean, it's there's, there's just so many things out there. So uh, many tools for the photographer to use. My, in order to create some of the pieces I want to create now, I have to start thinking about taking a course in and creating CG. Your three dimensional right, right. stuff that now, now I'm going back to school for it. I mean, that's over my yeah, head. Yeah, well, that, that is going to be, uh, well, it's, it's You've seen it's the images. Learn. You've yeah. seen the stuff. It's yeah. amazing. It's yeah. amazing work. What are you shooting with? Uh, 
I have two answers for that. One is that I'm shooting on a Nikon, but the other is a, a Jock Sturgis quote, who's a famous photographer, uh, fine art photographer. Uh, he sa someone asked him that question. He said, no, that's actually a photography question. I'm not really interested in that. I'm interested in talking about the images I'm creating. You wouldn't ask a painter what kind of brush they're using. Yes, I would. You would? Absolutely, oh, I really? would. Because okay. there's students out there that are watching this show that would like to know what kind of equipment ah. you use. But uh, if you don't want to go there, well, that's fine. It, it, the, the, the thing that gets me is there's a, there's a running joke in my studio between my assistant, who is a diehard Canon fan, and me, who has used Nikons all my life. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, my pictures, I'm sorry, Adam, my pictures are better than yours because I light them better. No, uh, he does wonderful work, but there's really no difference at the end of the day. If you know how to use your tools, I can go out and do a snapshot with my iPhone and create some beautiful images if I know how to use the tool. So it doesn't really matter to me if you've got a Nikon or a Canon. Canon has got some good stuff going for it. Nikon has some good stuff going for it. Leica has some great stuff going for it. If you want to spend $40,000 on a Hasselblad, I hope you have a really good reason for it and you need that extra horsepower. But at the end of the day, it's just another tool in the toolbox. Right. Okay, well, I, I know that, oh, that's fine. Then we won't talk, ab <laughs> we won't talk about your sorry. equipment as important as it is. Yeah. Okay, because I'm sorry. You, well, I'm sorry before, you're not going to take your iPhone and take the same kind of picture you're going to take with your Canon no, or your Nikon. No, definitely not. So, well, you, so, wouldn't, you wouldn't use a framing hammer to, to use what you need a sledgehammer for. No, but let me ask you the question, okay? Okay. Would, is, is a point and shoot, isn't it capturing that sunset or capturing the way the light reflects off of those icicles hanging from that that uh, ladder escape or whatever, fire escape, isn't it no matter what the tool is you have in your hand? Oh, it's the most important tool to have. Right. Yeah. Is, the, is, is the subject, right? Yeah, but knowing how to use that tool to capture it, I know for one of the point and shoots I use, I have to fool the camera all the time because the software inside of it tries to turn everything kind of gray. Right. Um, okay, yeah. okay. Well, that, that's fair. Well, just just know, know your tools. I mean, that, that, that's, if I was going to tell somebody, a student, anything, just play with it. Learn the tool. Learn how, uh, you know, if, if you can only afford the Pentax K, whatever the, the latest Pentax digital is, which is their starter camera, go out and push that camera until the image breaks in an interesting way. Okay. Okay, when, well, when, when, when a subject does come to you, mm -hmm. when you decide this is a subject that you want to work with, mm -hmm. um, how much research do you do? Uh... Let's talk about the Arboretum. Let's talk about the Arboretum. There's some beautiful birch trees up there mm -hmm. that run through, and there's a, there's a beautiful stream that runs through it. And it's fall time. And it's, are you up there constantly waiting for the right kind of color to change? Are you constantly waiting to see what kind of light is going to be preferable? Or are you metering it out so that you'll be able to fix it in Photoshop later? Uh, some combination thereof. Um, there's no hard and fast rules in my book on those kinds of things. But yeah, do, do the research ahead of time. Yeah. Um, take advantage of the iPhone apps to figure out when the sunset's going to be. Right. Scout it out ahead of time and figure out where the sun's going to fall. Um, yeah, definitely do, do homework. Yeah, so it's not, you're not stumbling upon a subject. I, you're, you're, you're I know a lot of photographers who are, are uh, who, well, I mean, luck is planning and fate combining, basically. But mm -hmm. I'm not that lucky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I have to do some thinking. You only carry time. your iPhone around with it. That's why. <laughs> No? I tend to, well, I, it's well, I'm just talking about that shot. You're yeah. walking down the street, and there it is. I don't see it that way. I, mean, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not that kind of a, a visual person. I, okay. I look at it, and, and as you'll see when you take a look at my work, mm -hmm. that it's, uh, there's a fantasy element to it where I might see, and I might take a note with the iPhone that, yeah. okay, this is, I like this light, the way it's falling through here, and the way it's raking across the bricks, and this texture is working great. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we had a dog running through? Oh, I see. Because there's always something else I want to add to it. I see. Um, or take away from it. So, come back later on and light it, or recreate it in the studio, right. or, you know, it, 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 I'll shoot, shoot it with the iPhone so I can go back and plan it out later, and then control everything. Great, great. Great. Well, we do have one image here. We, we have a bunch of them to look at, but there's this image here that is very, very beautiful. Talk about, talk Jenny. about this. This is a friend of mine named Jenny Bragdon, who is a, uh, an actress that I ran into, a very talented woman, uh, at the Footlight Club in Jamaica Plain. And uh, we decided to get together and work on a film still idea. Um, these are 
I loosely call them a dark portrait series because I uh, wanted to get away from what a standard headshot was. I mean, mm -hmm. so many people talk about getting a headshot done, and what they're looking for is this plastic kind of hey, smiley face, and there's nothing to them. They're not real people. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to create something that had more emotional depth and more, um, let's get away from the smile. Let's talk about something where she's the heroine. Right, she's, right. you know, in this movie, there's something that's going to happen before that we just missed, and there's something that's going to happen after, and she's anticipating it, and so we are too. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful shot. Was that done in the studio? Yes. yes. Um, is your studio set up like a traditional photographer's studio with, with, with the runs and the lights and, 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 and the umbrellas mm. and all of that fancy stuff? <laughs> I do have that, although my favorite backdrop is uh, uh, some pieces of uh, insulation that I picked up at Home Depot. Yeah. Um, I think one of the, the, the traps we run into as photographers is we're gearheads. Mm -hmm. We end up kind of falling into, okay, what's the latest lens? What's the latest mm -hmm. thing? It's uh, <clears throat> more important to, f once you've learned the tools, to put them aside and start thinking about, okay, here's the image I want to create, a film still, something a la Cindy Sherman, something that's going to be a la Hitchcock even. Mm -hmm. And what do I need to do to do that? That's photographed actually with old studio lights that are hot lights, like not unlike what ones you have in here, yeah. um, with a, a reflective background that uh, was, I think, 20 bucks yeah. versus you know $1,000 ones I could buy out of New York. Um, not that there's anything wrong with $1,000 ones for the right, right project. Well, it's all about the photographer, isn't yeah. it? Of course, it's all about me. <laughs> I just want to make sure I got that clear. <laughs> um, let's talk about the let's talk about the graphic designing. Um, um, what kind of ask? What are you doing? What are you doing with that? I mean, are you doing? Um, any, um, well, I got approached actually by uh, the Footlight Club originally, and uh, I actually had a conversation with somebody. We got talking about the dedication that these artists were putting into their work on the stage. The, the time, you know, they're, they're, it's community theater, so mm -hmm. they are. They all have day jobs. They all have other things going on and yet they'll come in and they'll spend four five six seven eight hours in the evening keeping on going so we looked at the posters that they were putting out at the time and uh, they were not they didn't reflect the passion mm. and uh, at that point the theater was coming out of a rough stage in terms of, of making money and they, they started realizing that in order to convince people to buy tickets, they had to tell them that they were going to go see this dedication, this passion right. up on stage. Right. And so we got talking about what we could do with posters to create that kind of an image. Um, updating the graphics, right. uh, putting together a branding system where the Footlight Club's logo is actually on the poster in a place that's legible and professional looking. Right. And create uh, graphics. and images and layer, layering images together that, that elevate it from basic, uh, I don't want to say high school level, but it, at, at that point it really was, you know, a bunch of clip art kind of put together. And I don't when you, well, to it's, probably, uh, it's probably actors and people that are, that are helping with scenery and stuff. It's a community theater. It's not it, like they, it wasn't they, there. Had a, well, like they had a dedicated person. No. Well, I, uh, no, they didn't. And <coughs> that was one of the problems was yeah. that, that it wasn't dedicated. It wasn't, and it was... The people who were doing the acting and the people who were doing the directing, their focus was completely on the stage where it should be. Right. But it wasn't so much on the marketing end of it, so yeah. it kind of fell flat there. So we came along to try you, to raise, raise So a, bi a billboard should be telling you more than the dates and the times and the name of the, of the, of the, of the play. It shouldn't just say rent's going to be next month. It needs to. It needs to portray. In, yeah. And, and are you doing that through photography? Are you also bringing in clip out? Are you using fonts? Are you using different kinds of levels of... of of your hues and what have you. I mean, how we, how does that happen? Every, every tool I can pull out. Uh, it starts with a, a basic concepting session, uh, talking about okay, what's the play about? Who the main characters are? Mm -hmm. What is sort of the the hinging events? Um, this goes back to uh, high school uh, play reading classes and stuff, uh, trying to figure out you know what what this <laughs> is all about. Um, thank you, my old English teachers. You really taught me well, and also my wife's an English teacher, so she helps me interpret these That's things. great. It's great to have in-house. Yes. Or <laughs> in-house assistants. Believe me, I know all about it. My wife is one of the, is a marketing whiz. And there you go. So happy to have her yeah. with us on our team. So uh, after that, it's, uh, what, what tools do we need to fulfill this 
mission. Right. Um, do we need to do a photo shoot where we're just capturing a still? I'm doing a um, I'm doing Cinderella actually for the Riverside Theater Works coming up, and we went out and because of the size of their cast, we couldn't really photograph the cast, and it's double cast mm -hmm. to boot, so it's you know there's 75 some odd people involved wow. in it. Um, so we doing a photo shoot and try to composite that all together wasn't really going to happen. So we went out and found a glass slipper. Huh. And we're just going to light it beautifully. We're going to have it on the red pillow, and we're going to try to I get that. tell it all. Yeah. That's great. Make it look rich and, and the, fulfill <laughs> the fantasy that, that's going on. Add some uh, clever fonts right. and, uh, and make it all sparkly. And right, and hold the hand of the people that are, that are the leads in the, in the play, the, now that they know that their, their mug isn't going to be on the poster. <laughs> Well, that's uh, <coughs> that's not your problem. No, it, well, <coughs> of course it is. I mean, there's there's a politics of these situations well, that you need to. When be you're dealing about. with artists and, and creative people. It's insane. But it's all about making sure that we're putting butts in seats. If right, they can exactly. tell me that that by putting you know this actor on the front, yeah. his personality is going to put butts in seats. I'm all for it. Um, right. But most of the time, it's uh, what are we going to do to tell the story to convince right. people to come in? A lot of times, we do. Put the artists. Right. But we're not person. talking about Julie Garland and Zero Mustel, after all. You no. Know? I mean, it, it is community <laughs> theater and yeah. all. We've got some great images to see. Thank you. Uh, why, don't we, uh, why don't we go to that now? Uh, right. They'll show up on, on our monitor here. That's what people are seeing at home. Uh, so uh, why don't we roll those now and tell dear, us what we're looking at as we go through. Dear Sweet Lilith, uh, this was actually created for an independent film, horror film, where the lead character was the. Uh, I got to get this right now. The Old Testament Lilith coming back, uh, and she's pissed. Mm. And I, I still don't know exactly what the teddy bear is about, but I mean, it was a, it was a fun dark portrait to put together. Cool. Pan in a shadow. This is actually uh, a lead singer for a rock band out of Uxbridge, Massachusetts, um, and we wanted to create sort of an iconic image of him, and his hair. Just, I mean, and the guy's energy was he was. Really, a Peter Pan guy. Cool. <laughs> Bouncing off the walls. There's another view of him, actually. This was created for a book cover, actually, for uh, Pope Annalisa, was the name of the book. Ah, the boogeyman. Um, <laughs> some people call this Harry Potter, though. Uh, it was actually created. Um, the actor and I were talking about Kevin from Sin City, uh, who is the serial killer walking around with the fingernails and yep. almost a goofy smile, and that was it, kind of spooky. And so we decided to try to create that kind of a character. One of my favorite movies. Yes, excellent movie. Paul Conroy, who's now a director in a community theater down in Atlanta. Uh, we wanted to create something moody for his biography. This is the lovely Meg, another dark portrait series where... Uh, it was just a test. We didn't have um, a complete idea of what we wanted to do. We just wanted to make her look soft, and, uh, but kind of dark and kind of smoky. Cool. This is Chris Palermo, uh, who is another actor and musician. And uh, this one ended up uh, as one of his headshots, I think, for his acting reel. This is a recent one. Uh, Akeem came to me uh, talking about wanting to create, he liked the idea of the dark portraits about uh, getting moody. Or exactly where he wanted to go with it, but we got into the studio and started playing, and he started feeling like um, sort of an anti-hero in his own movie, and we had a lot of fun putting that together. This is a... Uh, Another friend of mine who uh, is now doing the Boston Film Family. He's an independent film producer, and we wanted to create again that kind of uh, mystery and, and what's in the basement kind of feel. You got it. <laughs> and this is the lovely Anna Kuhn, who's also a, a fantastic artist. Retro Girls um, is uh, the name of her business. Uh, and we were working with the idea of the jewelry that she was wearing, but. Uh, wanted to create that, uh, this is all done in the studio, so we wanted to create that evening feel and create that kind of idea that she's in traffic. And uh, this woman's name is escaping me now, this is terrible. The idea here was to kind of create the Asian theme. Again, keeping things moody and, and dark and featuring her gorgeous eyes. Ah. This was created for, this is one of the Footlight Club's posters for uh, Vampire Lesbians of Sodom or Sleeping Beauty and Coma or 
something around that. One of those. I know, it was two. one of those uh, Charles Bush uh, uh, productions that was really quite bizarre. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Rodney was, was a great sport to play with us with this. And then there were none. Um, Peyton Pugmire approached me about this one. He was the director, uh, and he's actually the guy who was featured in the mirror, um, along with my son in the bottom right there. And he wanted to recreate or uh, re envision Agatha Christie's play as uh, a sort of a gothic horror. Yeah. And he had ghosts running through the, uh, the theater, and, and uh, we created this actually before we actually, the, the play was actually cast so that uh, he would have it as inspiration going forward. Scared the Christmas out of everybody. It did. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Arsenic and Old Lace, um, <laughs> great play. Great play. This is a more more standard composite. The idea behind the movie poster, or the, the play posters, was to kind of uh, pay homage to and borrow from the elements that would happen during a movie poster production. Mm -hmm. Get across that feeling of just one event, one idea that pushes uh, pushes the audience to want to come see the show. Leerlin uh, Kay, uh, in the middle there, approached me about this one, uh, and along with Wayne Fritchie, who is uh, the person on the left. And watching these actors work together was absolutely impressive, uh, trying to get across this Harold Pinter uh, play. It was, it was very cool to work with these people. Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, uh, that was, I think, my third poster for the Footlight Club, and uh, another great production. And That's fascinating. They're very, very good. Uh, one of the things that, that came, came to mind was, how much do you let the, the subject be involved in the production of, of the artwork? Because uh, a lot of that was character. Yes. You know, and, but, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's a departure from who they really are. <laughs> Well, that's the fun part about working with actors. Uh, the actors, well, in any any time you're sitting with behind the camera and there's a subject in front of the camera, it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. it, I don't care how much directing you're doing. If the person on the other side isn't really joining with you, right. there's a disconnect, and you're never going to get that 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 flow going. With actors, it's even more fun because you start telling them scenarios of, okay, you're you're in a dark alley, yeah. and or or uh, in the case of uh, Akeem. For a different image, we were talking, okay, you're sitting across the table from this lovely woman, and she's talking to you, and she's boring your ear off. What do you look like? And, right, right. and watching them go through those paces helps. Well, it is all pretend yeah. to them. Yeah. You know, so that's, fa that's great. Uh, the, 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 one, the posters look really cool. Thank I you. I mean, that's really a, kind of a neat way, way to, uh, to incorporate. All of your photography ends up, you know, I'm sure that a lot of your images end up on poster if you're mm -hmm. doing, especially if you're doing actors and actors, you know, in there. In their environment, yeah. you know. Do you do any shooting at the at the stu at the um, uh, theater? I uh, used to do a lot more before I got the studio space. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's uh, I do a lot of location work, um, but sometimes it's fun just to be able to come back to the studio and say, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to just play God in here and put yeah. the light there, and you know. Well, Matt, what's on the horizon? What's what's coming up soon? Uh, what have we got going on? Well, of course, uh, we're in planning stages for the next Jamaica Plain Open Studios. Yep. Um, we have. Uh, You're one of the um, organizers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations, you guys have a long-standing, great opportunity Thank down you. there, and uh, it's turned into the staple for a lot of other open studios to to kind of see how it's done. I always enjoy myself in Jamaica Plain. Thank you. you, know, you always, it's always a kind challenge. of always go to the Elliott, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then you end up down at the brewery and yeah. end up at, you know, Stony Brook, or, you know, and, uh, and it's always, it's always been, a, been a thrill. You guys have done a great job down there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We uh, hope to keep it going, and we hope to, uh, to help people get into some of the more private spaces that we haven't really had a chance to exploit as much as we would like to, yeah. um, the individual artist spaces. Yeah, people's, people's where they work is yes. where it's created is so important. Yes. It, it's, it's, nice to, it, it's nice to walk through and, and see... The group sites, oh, yeah, but no, no, no. to really nice. get to know the artist, right. to go to see where they work is... On half-finished pieces, wet pieces, I mean, yeah. that's just so fascinating. That you is, know? it is. And it's, and it's, see the process. It's so hidden that people don't get an opportunity to get in and see it as, as often as we... Do you show at Open Studios? Of I course do. you do. Yeah. You know, yeah. Nice <laughs> prominent spot up front. Being no, an <laughs> in the back somewhere. Matthew, thank you very much. Is Glad there a website people can go to? www.mckeephotography.com. If you go to It's All About Arts and just click on your name, 
from tonight's schedule, you'll be able to uh, get right to that. And thank uh, you very we'll much. Show, thank you again very much for coming. A pleasure. Talk a pleasure. You. Well, listen, gang, that was a great show. Thank you for, for being here with us. Uh, a couple of things I want to get, get to you before, before we do take off is uh, what a great opportunity it is here at BNN TV to, be, to do programming and to do uh, your, your, your own programs. Uh, one of the things that's available here, this is called Community TV, and what it is is that uh, as a member, you can join uh, BNN TV and become a producer. And what you get is you'll, you take some classes, uh, you learn Final Cut Pro, you learn how to use these fantastic cameras, these high def ca cameras, you learn how to do editing, you learn how to do lighting, you learn how to do sound, and you produce your own program. There's two studios here. The studio that I'm in is called Studio B, and this is where nonprofits get a chance to work. So nonprofits get to talk about their organization, they get to talk about their mission, and uh, it's live, and here, here it comes right at you. You get an opportunity to call in and ask questions. The other side, in Studio A, people are doing production work. They are going in there and doing fashion shows, doing live music performances, shooting outside on location, bringing the, the footage back in here to do editing and to do sound engineering and make sure that everything looks, you know, the way they want. And guess what? We put it on TV. And you have an opportunity to do that as well. So what I'm, my, what I'm suggesting is that you go to bnntv.org and uh, get in touch with a gentleman by the name of Jim Atwood. Jim Atwood is, uh, is the cat who knows everything there is to know about cable access and the opportunities that are here for, uh, for members of the community to come in and learn how to do television programming. If you've been watching us for the last 50 minutes, you say, I can do better than that guy, come on down. It would be great to have people down here in this building. This is a brand new facility. Come down for a tour. Uh, for a very nominal amount of money, it costs next to nothing to come down here and be, uh, be a member of BNN TV. So, with that being said, please, make sure you go to bnntv.org and uh, get in touch with Mr. Jim Atwood. He's, uh, he's the cat you want to talk to. Uh, once again, Suzanne is doing fine. She's okay. She just kind of swallowed wrong, and she's okay. So don't, want, don't be sending anybody down here thinking that I've got her hidden behind man over here. That ain't the case. Thank you for being with us. We really do appreciate everything that you do for us. Um, thank you, Boston Main Streets. Get out and do something artful for yourself. Please get out there and create something this week. Go to a gallery. Go to a movie. Go to a live music performance. Uh, do something for yourself artfully. And like I like to say every week, please, keep in the forefront of your minds. Our mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews on foreign soil. Get out. Do something artful. Do it for them. Send it over to them. Let them know that you're thinking of them and you love them. Uh, we'll dig you next week, okay, gang? Thanks an awful lot for being here. Next week's Footlight Club's going to be here. It's going to be lots and lots of fun. Thanks, guys.